because when you had our um, home valued just by chance, um, the property value come up went up nearly thirty percent. We were thinking, well, we have the, we just bought this property, didn't do much to it. We just stayed down for three years. The, the price went up thirty percent. We can repeat it. Um, and then that's one of the spark. Um, um, I would say catalyst. Um, far to see there's other ways to making making money, making profit. This is Property Invest Story where we talk to successful property investors to find out more about their stories, mindset and strategies. I'm Tyron Shum and in this episode on Property Invest Story, we're chatting to mortgage broker Eric Wu whose wish to attain financial freedom for his family coincided with his love of property investing as a vehicle. Having undertaken many jobs from scientist to salesperson, We'll find out how the jack of all trades embarked on his journey to reach his ultimate goals. Also, before we delve into this episode, go over to propertyinveststory.com and subscribe to receive your free property investor case studies where you'll learn how to generate passive income from your properties. Go there now to sign up for free. My name is Eric. I'm a mortgage broker. Uh, my, the name of the company is Railway Finance. Um, we, we started this company um, around about, um, one and a half years ago. I have a, quite an uh, interesting career before. So I came to um, Australia when I was 29. That was around about 40 years ago. Um, so I did quite a few jobs. Um, didn't like it. Um, just um, didn't fit my um okay i'll say kind of goals i know i want to achieve something bigger but the didn't financing really inspire me um the property investing i started in back in 20 20 or 2010 that's the time when i bought my first investment property so what does he do in any given day my day sometimes can be really packed uh most of the time i meet with a client um to uh, to have a bit of a discussion session to find out what they want to achieve and what do they actually need and um and, and discuss um, you know, probably investing ideas as well and um the rest day would be um doing the long application dealing with the banks um uh, look i, I find i spend quite a few quite a lot of time um with with investors and a majority of them um starting out or have um, um portfolios they want to expand more um yeah i enjoy doing it Wu grew up in China where he undertook most of his education before moving to Australia. I grew up grew up in, in China. Um, so I came to um, Australia when I was 29 years old. Um, I came here for my master's degree. Um, yeah, and that was in 20, 2002, late 2002. So up now it's, you know, it's more than 14 years. I grew up in a in, 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 in city in the middle of China. Um, it's been interesting um, history. I um, went to boarding school uh, at, a, at a high school, so I left home. There was no room in my home um, after I, I went to high school. So the uni- university I went to was a boarding university as well. So I stayed there for four years. Um, I, I finished my bachelor degree as, as a pharmacist. Um, and after that, I went to Beijing to, to work for close to eight or ten years. I um, did quite a few roles, the, the research uh, as a scientist, then I um, worked for a pharmaceutical company as a sales. I don't mind to be a uh, to be um, um, scientist to to work with um, numbers facts, but I, I I think there's more uh, there's more interesting world out there. Um, so that's part of the reason why I choose sales. And, uh, and with that is the two uh, two folds of the story. First of all, it's more uh, um, soft driven. Um, there's no limit to what you can do. That's the one thing that attracts me. And the other side is more um, um, work with people to uh, to um, improve my people skills. It's more fascinating work with people. It's just you meet with a different person every single day. Every day is different. After working in Beijing for about 10 years in sales, the choice to move to Australia was based on the desire for change. Uh, I guess um, it's quite a lot to do with my, my own um uh, uh, experience and, and uh, kind of a um, personality. Um, it's very hard for me to stay in one place for more than five to five to eight years. 
Um, once I started in my new job, I get used to it. I want to seek more challenge. Um, back before I came to here, I was already in quite high income. I was a good income actually, um, but I can see my um, my career is close to to, to peaking. Um, I was thinking, well, um, I want something different. I want to see a different um, environment. Uh, try something different. So that's part of the reason why I came here. Um, the, the challenge is huge. Um, it's come from 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 China when, they, when I couldn't speak any English at all. Um, we we'll, we'll learn we we'll learn English in school for a number of years, but primarily reading and um and not 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 much listening and none speaking at all. So when I came here, it's, everything's different. And I pretty much pick, pick English from from scratch. That that was um, a very interesting time. When he arrived in Australia, Wu completed his master's in health and management. I actually was a full-time student doing my master's degree in the um, University of New South Wales. Um, so I did quite a few um, um, uh, labor hire work in the news agency and, and uh, also work in the factory as a, as a packing assistant as well. That was doing my, doing my full-time studying. However, being an overseas student, he found it increasingly hard to work in that industry. So he looked for employment elsewhere. I tried um, quite quite a lot. There was no jobs available, so I was thinking, well, I have to survive. I need to find something um, and guarantee um, employment. So that's why I went to nursing. So I did my uh, uh, bachelor of nursing in two for two years in UTS. Um, after graduate from that, I worked in hospital for two years as well in public hospital. And then I moved to a corporate, then work for a few years. And at the same time, I'm starting my investing journey. Um, from I bought my first home in 2007, so it just kept going until now. Um, yeah, it's been a really interesting um, journey. So, did Wu have any influences from his parents to invest into property? I wish I had, um, but I did learn some valuable um, um, things from parents. It's like you have really good work ethic and also um, work hard. Um, Try our best. The first property Wu bought wasn't intended as an investment property, yet it was a catalyst for the beginning of his property journey. That was a um, super unit um, apartment, I'll say, um, in Hongsby in, in Sydney. Um, back then, was, was, the price was really um, attractive. It was around 387k um, for super apartment. Now, that thing was around 8, 850. Um, so initially when we bought this property, we, 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 our pure idea is this is our home. There's no um, investment side involved. Um, but three years later, the prices went up quite a lot. And then in 2010, something clicked for him that shed a whole new light on his first property. So by that time, we, we didn't really um, think too much about um, um, property investing. Because we, we had our um, home valued just by chance. Um, the property value come up went up nearly 30%. We were thinking, well, we have the, we just bought this property, it didn't do much to it. We just sat down for three years. The, the price went about 30%. We can repeat it. Um, and that, that's one of the spark, um, um, I would say catalyst, um, for us to see that there are other ways to making making money, making profit. Um, at the same time, we are actually looking for something to invest, to, to create better, to create a different income stream. So at, at, in 20, 2010, this can, two things come together. That's why we started um, uh, researching into property and investing into property. From there, Wu continued to build his portfolio, diversifying between various states in Australia. So the first one, we <clears throat> were not sure what we were doing. So it was a really long process. It, takes, it took us uh, three to six months to um, come to a, to, a, to, a, to a property. It was um, um, really basic, all the things that, Ex house commission houses in a good location, um, close to uh, the public transport, uh, to close to the shops. We, we bought for a really um, good price, three ninety five. Now it's, well, I think it was uh, well above um, seven hundred k. Yeah, and, and the year after we bought another one, um, then um, we repeated pretty much for, um, one a year. And in 2015, it was a big year for us. With, with, with the Sydney booms, we took out lots and lots of equity and I bought four, four properties in Brisbane. Coming up after the break, we'll delve into Wu's property portfolio. It, it's kind of a, a come to stage. I can walk away from, from the whole portfolio. It's just look after itself. His worst investing moment. Property manager took took over the renovation, but I, 
unfortunately a few things bad things come together it's, it's just a bit of a head ongoing headache and that's next i'm taran sham and you're listening to property investory Hey podcast listeners, are you enjoying listening to these stories and want more? Then head over to propertyinvestory.com and subscribe to receive your free property case studies that I only send exclusively via email. Just one of the many benefits of being part of this community. These real case studies are from experienced property investors where they share specific numbers of their portfolio, their strategies and much more. Simply visit propertyinvestory.com to get your free case studies. Now back to the show. Purchasing between New South Wales and Southern Queensland, Wu has accumulated nine properties worth a considerable asset base. Um, I think it's very close or maybe a little bit exceed 5 million overall. The, the pure rental uh, compared with the pure interest repayment, it's, it's um, positive. But if we consider all the ongoing costs, like the um, maintenance, the, the management fee, the insurance, it, it, it's, it's neutral. It, it's kind of a, a comes to stage, like a walk away from, from the whole portfolio, it's just look after itself. The purpose of building his portfolio, as with many property investors, is to attain wealth through generating passive income for his family. I, I think the primary goal for us um, is to create wealth. Um, it, it's, it's not only for me, it's actually for the family as well. Um, my plan is hold hold on to it as as long as I can, um, and I also just expand the portfolio. Um, once it comes to a certain certain size, I might um, um, sell part of it and I reduce the reduce the debt. Wu's worst investing moment came at a time when not only time was short, but expenses would have been tight for him as well. Is the one that probably bought in Brisbane. Um, it, 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 the property itself wasn't in good condition. Um, um, it, it needed lots of work, but it, 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 at that time, when it was in, in roughly June 2015, yeah, at that time when my son was born, I couldn't really do the renovation by myself. So the, the property manager took it, took over the renovation. But I, unfortunately, a few things, bad things came together. It's, it's just a bit of a head, ongoing headache. Then the builder who did the renovation turned out to be. Um, not, not really a bit of a dodgy builder. Uh, so there's lots of uh, um, substandard quality of work. I'm still still doing the fixing up work at this point in time, two years later. Yeah, it's, it's still, um, um, it's a headache. It's pretty much I did the whole renovation for the whole house. The, main, the, the biggest problem is the bathroom. It's, it's not a sealed properly, the tile's not done properly, the, the, the waterproofing is, is not, not done properly. There's lots of minor, man, minor stuff. It's just ongoing. Uh, fixing up. So, so um, and this year I decided decided just just uh, just rip the whole bathroom and and re re did it. Uh, it cost quite a lot of money and also the stress and um and a headache. <laughs> I, I think let's um, I think let's let's just part of the um, part of the, the investing journey. It's, it's lots of things not predictable. But the property itself has good foundations and a good rental yield. The, the, the property itself is, is actually a quite a good quality um, property because when I bought it, um, it was 370, um, 370k. So at the same time, the, the, the same area was selling for vacant land, the same size of land was run by 320k. So I was thinking that I, I didn't buy, um, um, I want to think it's a, it's a, it's a bad, bad buy. It, it's just the, the after work is a bit of a um, big of issue. Um, uh, I, I still don't think it's a bad property. It's still, still good, good one. I just need a bit of time to uh, to smooth out the, all, all, the, all the troubles and um, give you time for for it to grow itself. Yeah, rental is around five percent. It's still okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's not too bad. One of Wu's mentors shaped the way he now considers property investing, which was an important aha moment for him. The aha moment is actually the moment when I, when I spoke to my um, mortgage broker. Um, uh, he, he's um, he's he's a, just an amazing person. Um, he actually op- uh, helped me to see the, the big picture, the, the finance behind the property investing. So now when I look at back, um, the, the property investing is not in itself. Um, it's less interesting than the finance side of the property investing. Look, the, the, the property investing is in itself. The property is a tool to use to get to what what you want to achieve. 
regardless whether it's financial freedom, regardless whether it's passive income, regardless whether it's credit wealth, it's just a tool for you to use. Some people choose them uh, shares, some people choose them um, uh, property. The, the property, there's the three, I think there's three reasons um, um, it's, it's, it's good to choose. First of all, it's the property cycle. <clears throat> The second one is leveraging. The third one is the compounding. So all of that, when you, when you see property, you can't really see the three factors from, from the face value. But once you see that from the finance side, you will see there clearly is three distinct factors there. I have a lots of um, source and knowledge about property investing, but didn't know there's, uh, there's a deeper uh, meaning for property investing, which is the finance side of stuff. So it's, it's probably this person helping to see them, see them in um, the deeper big picture. So, what is the all-important why behind Wu's property journey? Look, I haven't set a real figure of, of a real of how much income I want, but what I want is at least I have a freedom. I don't need to depend on a job, um, on, on a work to create that income. I can, I can pretty much do what I want to do, and sometimes the the, the the assets can generate income for me. Um, I would say it's kind of financial freedom, but I didn't put any figures how much income I need to to uh, to have the defined financial freedom. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. I think um, you, you've got a, a big picture in mind, and you know what you want in terms of financial freedom. Do you what? What will you do when you have free time to do whatever you want? Do you have any interesting hobbies you, you'll be pursuing, or do you have something that you want to do with family? What would you like to do? Uh, look, I, I like travel. I haven't traveled much, so that's the, that's the first thing on the list. And my my idea is not a, not a travel as a, as a tourist. I wanted to live somewhere for 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 like six to to eight months. Just to see how 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 the locals live, yeah, maybe Europe, um, or even Japan. So, inspired by Wu's story and his why for property investing, we'll keep the conversation going in a future episode on property investor. We'll talk about how to apply the strategy. I choose the area with with very good fundamentals. It's like public transport, schools, hospitals, shops. Um, it, this this kind of property, um, you, you you tend to have less um, less risk of uh, leaving vacant for a long period of time. His success habits for property investing: just keep an open mind, um, um, just take on or just explore new ideas. And that's next time in a future episode of Property Invest Story. Also, if you haven't subscribed to receive your free property case studies that I only send out exclusively via email. You can text me your email address to 0499881040 to subscribe. These real case studies are from experienced property investors where they share specific numbers of their portfolio, the strategies and much more. Simply text me your email address to 0499881040 to get your free case studies. Thanks for listening.